In this video, we're going to talk about grouping data. Grouping data is something that's done because working with a lot of data can be difficult. It was especially difficult a long time ago when computers were the size of buildings. Powdermaker Hall actually used to house a giant computer that the accounting department used long before my time at Queens College, but that was what that building was used for at one point in time. And this is also necessary for constructing certain types of graphs, and that's what's going to be more relevant to us. First, we'll talk about some important terms. A class is a category or range of data. Class mark is the midpoint of a class or the average of the upper and lower class limits. The upper and lower class limits are the highest and lowest values that can be placed into a class. Next, we have class frequency. This is how many values from the sample fall into one class. Total frequency is the sample size, or n, or the sum of all of the class frequencies. The modal class is the class with the highest frequency. The best way to understand how grouping data works is to look at an example. Here we have an example where we have some grades for an exam, and we want to group the data into classes. Here we've already been given classes. In some problems, you may not be given all of the classes you need to use, but you'll be told that your lowest class is going to be 40 to 49, and all of your classes have to have the same size or class width meaning we can fit the same amount of values into each class. So the way we're going to group this data into classes is here, first grade we see is a 44, so we're going to cross that off and then put a tally mark down for the class where the 40s are, because 44 falls between 40 and 49. Next we have a grade of 50, so we'll cross that off, and that's going to go in the 50 to 59 class. 67 will go in the 60 to 69 class, 89 falls in the 80 to 89 class, and we'll continue like this for all of the other grades. Now that we've grouped all of our data into classes, we can find the class frequency for each. The class frequency is just how many values fall in each class. Because we had one grade between 40 and 49, that class frequency is 1. We had two grades between 50 to 59, so that class frequency is 2, and so on. If we wanted to find our total frequency, we could add up all of these class frequencies, and this adds up to 20. Sometimes a problem may tell you that you have a sample size of size 20, and if you added these up and they didn't add up to 20, that would be a sign that you maybe missed a value or you put an extra value into one class and then you would need to go back and check your work. We can also count the number of grades up here and see that we have 20, so these numbers are right. The next thing we'll talk about here is how to find the class mark, and this is something that we're going to need to do for graphing a histogram and graphing a frequency polygon, which we'll see in the next one or two videos. If we go back to the definition, the class mark is the midpoint of the class or the average of the upper and lower class limits. So the way we'll find that is you take your lower value for the class or lower limit and your upper value for the class or your upper limit, add them together and divide by 2. So this class mark will be 40 plus 49 divided by 2, which works out to be 44.5. And then we would do the same thing for the other classes. We found all of our class marks and all of our data has been put into groups. Now we can use this data to construct two different types of graphs. 